guys, not sure how well you're going to be able to hear this, but I'm in a 2010 Outback 2.5i. As you see, 136,000 and 92 miles on the clock. A uh, customer brought it to me with a couple complaints. The main complaint was when coming to a stop quickly, panic stop, etc., the car stalls, the engine stalls out. Uh, already diagnosed that as a failing torque converter. for the customer to get the funds ready to do that replacement but they had an issue the other night with the car where they uh, took it to Taco Bell went inside came out and the car would not uh, start it would crank but it would not start check engine light came on also had ABS traction control cruise control all those lights that normally come on when you have a brake fault or a check engine light and uh, brought it to me the next day uh, it finally did start. Brought it to me the next day at the shop. I uh, hooked the scan tool to it and I found a P0340, I think it was, for the cam sensor. And um, what else? It was a right front and right rear wheel speed sensor error, a electronic brake control module failure. Uh, it's got a HVAC code. There's a actuator uh, I can't remember if it's a mode door or a blend door on the driver's side I can hear it clicking so that's the code for that um, can't remember if I actually took video of the scan tool might go back and take some video of it this is going to be kind of a patched together video uh, I am shooting on my cell phone right now I don't know if you can hear this noise this is the first time I've actually got up to speed but I'm also hearing a lot of main bearing noise in this transmission know if you can hear that or not um, I had her take it to Subaru for a second opinion on the torque converter diagnos diagnosis because honestly I don't have hand much hands-on experience with the CVTs yet I've dealt way more with the 4 EAT and 5 EAT I don't have much experience at all on the TR 580s and uh, 690s this is being a 2010 has a TR 690 in it uh, which is the more heavy-duty transmission and normally there's not issues in the 2010 and 2011 models uh, case in point my brother's 2011 2.5i I think he's got 190,000 miles on his at this point with driving still in the original CVT transmission never been opened never been serviced so not sure exactly what caused this failure with this torque converter but uh, Noah's definitely failed uh, Subaru confirmed that when they uh, took the car in to the dealership to have them look at it. They also found, I believe there's an issue with uh, the right front wheel bearing. That might be some of the noise I'm hearing, but a lot of it seems to be coming from the tunnel in the center here. It seems to be transmission related because it is, uh, um, it does correlate to speed, but a wheel bearing would correlate to speed too, but I'm not, there's two different sounds I'm hearing. It's hard to describe exactly, but thinking that CVT noise is part of it. So, um, They've been driving it for a while like this. I don't know how long. Hopefully the uh, torque converter has not failed enough to damage the transmission. A lot of times at the Subaru dealership when I went in for an interview, which I haven't actually talked about that in the video yet. Uh, I did, I think, make a community post about it, but uh, two, three weeks ago I went to the Subaru dealership, local Subaru dealership, and uh, put in an application. They said they were looking for techs. Uh, they had a shortage. Uh, they called in for an interview, went and interviewed, talked to service manager, talked to their lead tech shop foreman. Uh, everything seemed to be going pretty well. Uh, I had a little bit of, uh, I picked up a little bit of uh, disinterest from the service uh, manager. He did mention uh, about me having the YouTube channel and was not thrilled about me being on YouTube for whatever reason. 
and he was adamant that I would never film anything in the service department, which I was fine with, and said I could not take pictures, which I thought was a little excessive that I couldn't, you know, take, because any of you that follow me on Instagram, I don't post a lot on the Mr. Subaru Instagram account, but I post a lot on my personal account. Most of you know the two, and uh, I like to take pictures throughout the day what I'm working on when I see weird stuff failures things like that nature and I thought that was a little bit of a double standard that I he said I couldn't even take pictures if I was in there when while we were interviewing I saw lots of texts in there goofing off and uh, snapchatting and stuff like that but I was gonna have special limitations placed on me uh well, like I said we'll get more into that whole scenario uh what happened what transpired in another video maybe uh, it's been three weeks now, and they haven't called me back, so I doubt I'm going to hear a call back. And I'm sure not going to call them and uh, beg them. Uh, if they wanted me, they would have called me. Obviously, they don't want me, so it is what it is. But anyway, back to this car. The uh, Hopefully, the torque converter replacement will fix the issue. But I'm afraid that, you know, with the amount of time that's been... Uh, had that failure, I don't know exactly how long, but I know it's been a while since I've been uh, aware of it. I hope that the torque converter has not torn up itself enough to put uh, metal shavings and trash through the system, through the fluid, and actually start tearing up components in the transmission itself. Uh, when I was at the interview, I did ask the guy, the, the shop foreman, you know, I said, you know, I sent the car up there. I haven't seen many done much work on CVTs. He said, yeah, torque converter. We usually throw a tor torque converter in it. And uh, he said, it's kind of hit and miss. Sometimes the torque converter is fine uh, to fix the issue and you're good. Sometimes you put a torque converter in it and the next week you're putting a whole transmission in it. So it's hard to say. And uh, I hate it like the devil for this person because they just bought the car uh, four or five months ago and uh, already having all these issues. It needs a time belt and water pump kit. It's, I don't think it's ever been changed. I looked at it the other day and there's no writing on the belt and it's starting to get a little bit of uh, cracking in it and stuff. So it looks like it's a uh, higher mileage. I doubt that spark plugs have been replaced. I doubt it needs rocker cover gaskets. It's got a small rear main uh, seal oil leak, which if I do the torque converter, we'll be able to do that at the same time. Um, just a whole lot of maintenance issues. I think it's got a torn CV axle boot and a couple other things. But, um, yeah, so hopefully I will get the okay from these people before too long and we'll have a CVT torque converter replacement video. Uh, I know some of you have been kind of ticked off, to say the least, about the tool videos I've been doing. I did film a ton of uh, icon tool videos and was planning to film some more uh, I plan to space them out a little more than I have but you know everyone's talking about it right now so kind of jumped on the bandwagon with it and uh, you know I'm the whole premise of doing tools is because guys I want to get into working on my own car I don't have anything what do you suggest so um, the reason I gravitated to the Icon stuff is because a lot of people go to Harbor Freight uh, the DIYers because it's a lot cheaper most times than uh, Home Depot or Lowe's or anything like Gear Wrench or Craftsman or uh, Tecton. It's pretty close to Tecton prices from what I've seen on Amazon. Never really hands on with any of the Tecton stuff. Uh, but the whole point of it is I'm testing this stuff independently harbor freight didn't send me any of this stuff for free like all the well, majority of the other guys that are making videos on right now i've shown my receipts at the beginning of every video this is all coming off of my credit card i think to the tune of about seven eight hundred bucks worth of stuff at this point and uh you viewers and subscribers that stick around it's gonna pay off because once i'm done testing these tools and once i if i break any of course i'm gonna warrant and get them all replaced I'm going to be doing some contests, and I will be giving away the vast majority of the Icon tools to you viewers. So, you know, just something to help you guys that don't have much to work with and want to get into working on your car and want to get into doing your own service. You know, it's a way for you to get uh, some decent hand tools, which 
that's why I'm testing them to see, you know, if I'm not going to put my endorsement on a tool unless I've used it. So I know that a lot of you know that I was a Snap-on dealer and I'm a big Snap-on fan. And I'm not saying in the least bit for anyone to go out buying Snap-on. There's no reason for anyone that is not a professional technician or you know, makes their living with hand tools, power tools, etc., to buy Snap-on stuff. It's, you're, I look. At, I've, I've talked about it to people. I look at it this way: if you do not see a Snap-on truck at your place of business or you're at your occupation, then you are not the demographic that needs to be buying Snap-on. Snap-on is for professional technicians, mechanics, etc., that use those tools eight to ten hours a day five to seven days a week you know to earn their paycheck that is where snap on mac mac code to a far less degree come in the tools everyone that is not in the trade say they're ungodly expensive if you're in the trades and you understand the value of a good tool that you use to make your living you understand the price of it Sometimes, I mean, I understand that it's high. And there's a lot of things I'm shaking my head at, like, why in the heck is that so high? There's no reason for it to be that high. But there is a premium price on this stuff for a reason. And a lot of guys say, well, you know, the cheaper tools are 80 to 90% of what the Snap-on is, and the price difference isn't worth it. But, you know... When you come into that, it's hard to just, it's hard to explain that 10%, 15% difference in the snap on under the prosumer grade tool to people that don't use tools day in, day out, hour after hour, week after week. It's just something that the pros understand. And I always say it, I always said it on the tool truck and I say it to myself you know, professional tools are not a purchase, they are an investment. If you take care of them, they will take care of you for the rest of your career. Simply put, uh, you know, I've bought stuff from Harbor Freight. I buy other tool manufacturers. I'm not a snap-on snob. Everything in my toolbox is not snap-on. I've got lots of gear wrench. I've got cheap stuff. I've got some Harbor Freight stuff just recently I bought. You know, it's it's a whole mix, but I'm getting way off topic here. This is other videos to cover. We're on this Outback. So, yeah, the... Um, Hopefully I can do the torque converter in it. The cam sensor code, the, they brought it back up here for me to put a cam sensor in. I checked it one day in the parking lot and the cam sensor output signal was very weak. As we stopped and started the engine, I'll put a little video clip in of that. one more time it seems to be putting out less and less signal each time you stop it uh, the signal was dropping out and getting weak so I figured hey the sensor's dying but they brought it up here today I had to order the sensor from Subaru and uh, cars running perfectly fine the engine lights out the ABS light is out traction light all that stuff went back out rescanned it this morning all the codes are still there they're just back in the history so maybe it was a fluke maybe it was a connection error I don't know maybe when I back probed the sensor to do check it with the lab scope maybe that fixed whatever it was you know sometimes sensors fluke out it was a, a little glitch so I've been driving it for about an hour now, start and stop and start and stop, and I cannot make the issue reappear. That's what sucks about intermittent issues. It's trying to get the problem to come back in when, uh, you know, the customer said, well, I had this issue, it must be broke, and then, you know, you drive it and drive it and drive it, and you can't get it to act up, and then 
and you tell them, hey, you know, I think it's fine, come get it. I've drove it and I can't get it to do anything, and then they pick it up, you know, the next day it acts up on them again and you look like an idiot, but that's just the way it goes sometimes. So on this, I've driven it and driven it and I can't get it to act up. Everything still in the history. So I'm gonna call the customer, tell them to come get the car and just drive it. Uh, put the money towards the torque converter replacement because that'd be priority number one at this point before we destroy the CVT if it isn't damaged already and uh, we'll go from there if they get a check engine light again and the car don't want to start and we get another uh, PO340 active for a cam sensor uh, you know we'll just have to check it again then see if the sensor is failing or not outputting a signal if we've got an actual issue with the circuit itself but as of right now everything's functioning like it should so that's all I can do so, uh, weird little impromptu uh, video of mostly instrument cluster and uh, my lap, but uh, and my rambling. But uh, yeah, hope to get back on track with some more Subaru videos for you guys. Like I said, I know you're getting kind of some of you are kind of uh, on the fence, and had some people message saying that they were unsubscribing because they couldn't stand the tool videos. You know, if you got an issue, just don't watch the tool video and wait for the Subaru videos. I just released one this weekend, so. You know, at least once a week there will be a Subaru video, uh, as I've done for the last three, four years now. So, yeah. Well, got to cut it to a close here. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. See you in the next one.